Hello there, my name's Cal and I'm with AB Smartly and I've been asked to give you a little demo of how creating an experiment works on the web console. So the first thing you have to do is come up to experiments and click new experiment and we give it a name. I'm going to call it new checkout button, for example. And down here in the type of analysis, I'm going to choose group sequential because it's a faster way of conducting experiments and getting results sooner. Next, I'm going to click through to the variance page. And here you can choose to have uh, up to four variants. You can even change the split of the variance. So what percentage of people see each variant. I'm just going to leave those at the default for now. Each variant can have its own name and you can also add screenshots so you can reference later to what things looked like before or what they might look like in the future based on this experiment. Variables are the next thing and they are super interesting. They give us a way of pulling data from the web console into our application code. So for example, let's say we want to see if this new checkout button should be green or should be red. Well, I can come in here, add a variable, call it color, green, and down here for variant B, color, blue, did I say blue? Might have been red, I don't remember. <laughs> um, so, now in the code we can pull down this color variable and make the button the correct color without having to change anything in the code later on. Say you don't want it to be red, you want it to be blue, then you can come here, change that, and it will change in the application code rather than having to redeploy the website or put an update in on the App Store for iOS, for example. What's also really great is you can even come in here and add some code to pull in to your code and run on your application, which is super cool. Uh, let's leave this at green. Okay, so next we're on the audiences step. Here you can choose your tracking unit. This could be user ID or anonymous ID or device ID. Um, as you can see, we have quite a lot here. Cluster ID, that's a common one. Um, and you can choose your application. So let's say we have a website and the iOS app and an Android app. We want this experiment to run on all of those things so we can add all of them, or maybe we just want it to run on the iOS app. So we just leave the iOS app in there. Now for the targeting audience, I can come in here and narrow down who this experiment affects uh, using this targeting audience uh, fields. So for example, I could say country is equal to Great Britain and the language is equal to English. And you can add more conditions, you can add a second layer of conditions, these can be and or or, you can get really, really specific with your uh, targeting audience and who the experiment is affecting. So I'm going to click through to the metrics page. Now, a primary metric is the metric that you will make a decision based on at the end of the experiment. So we have a new checkout button. I think uh, checkouts here would be a really useful metric to decide on how many people made a checkout, how many checkouts were made during this experiment. And you can also add secondary, guardrail, and exploratory metrics just to have on the experiment details page to look at and see their information as well. So for example, users checking out would be a good secondary metric. Next is the analysis step. This is where you can really fine tune your uh, experiment, especially if it's a group sequential experiment. You can choose how many analyses you do. You can choose the futility type. You can choose your minimum detectable effect. For now, I'm gonna just leave all of these at the default. The last step is the metadata step. 
So you can add owners for the experiment, you can choose a particular team that is associated with the experiment, you can add tags to uh, give reference and information to what the experiment is about and what it's for. We also have a description section. Now, these can be fully customized uh, per client. So our defaults are hypothesis, prediction, purpose, implementation, details, action points, and other, but these can be removed. You can make them required. You can add your own. You can add more sections like this description section uh, at will. So um, maybe I want to add a hypothesis, but I don't know what it's going to be yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip it and I'm going to, you can give a little review of all the things that I added here and then I'm going to save the experiment as a draft. Now I've made a decision, I know what the hypothesis is going to be, I can come in here and I can edit the same experiment, I can go straight to the metadata step and my hypothesis will be based on the fact that green is a nice color, we believe that more checkouts will convert with a green button. Okay, and now because I've completed the entire form, I can save the experiment as ready. Um, a ready experiment is ready to go. You can start it or you can start it in development immediately. For example, I'm going to come down here and click start development. Uh, I'll give it a comment experiment started for developers. And now that experiment is running in development. So what that means is it will only run in the code in a development environment and environments you can set up in settings over here. Um, so it won't affect your actual users yet, but uh, people working on it and checking out the experiments can see it in their development environments. Once they've got the code all set up and they're very happy with how it's going, you can come in here and click start. You can give it a comment if needed. I'm gonna go straight through and click start. And now the experiment is running and it's ready to go. Test on all the users. Um, I'm going to wait for a bit, let that get some data, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when an experiment is ready to go. So here's an experiment that uh, has completed its um, sample size. It's had enough users to make a decision on it. And you can come through here, you can check the graphs, you can check all the data in the tables, you can see our annotations and see what was happening at any one time. Um, but it is time to make a decision on this experiment. As you can see, we have a recommended action saying that a variant that wasn't the control variant did significantly better than the control variant. So now we should put it full on. So all I have to do is click this button and it'll come up with an option to choose which variant if there are multiple but the uh, best one will be selected by default and you can leave a report of what happened so uh, this is a new cards experiment uh, so let's just say the new cards performed much better than the old ones um, and usually this is much longer and it supports rich text so you can do headers and all those things but for now I'll just leave it like that and I will choose full on experiment. And now this experiment is full on so every user who comes to the platform will see this variant, variant B, rather than 50% seeing variant A and 50% seeing variant B as well. Now much later on uh, the code should be cleaned up, so the uh, testing code should be taken out of the application and replaced with just the actual variant B 
code um, all by itself. And after some time, the AB Smartly platform will let you know if code cleanup needs to happen. Once the code has been cleaned up, you can come up here and click archive and archive the experiment. So now it will no longer come up in the experiments list. And that's the life cycle of an AB Smartly experiment. I hope you've enjoyed and uh, let us know if you have any questions at all. We're always happy to reach out on Slack or by email and uh, discuss these things. Have a great day. Thank you so much.